Right. So at the time, you got responsibilities. You know what yeah. I mean? Not only, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 like, the responsibilities of taking care of, you know, of a child. Um, obviously, you graduated, got your degree. you like, man, I need to be out here making this bread, like, ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Like, yesterday. What was your mental going through? Because I know being, you know, a black male, like, we hear the right. stuff. We hear the things on social media, like, you know, some baby daddies ain't ain't this. They ain't that. Like, you know, they ain't showing up. But, you know, that's the total opposite from you, man. So I, I just want to know mentally where were you during that time where you had to go back, you know, be humble enough to say, man, let me reach out to my old manager and hop back in on this foot action until something opened up for me. Because a lot of people wouldn't do that. Right, bro. That that, that was the grind. Mm-hmm. Um, graduating, bro, I'm, I'm like, you know, I need to make sure – He's straight at all times. Yeah. You know, I was in college. My girl held it down. I, I She held it down. Word. My family held it down. Her family held it down. So, you know, it was it was no complaints at all. Mm-hmm. But when I when I graduated, I knew, all right, let me, let me, it, it's time. Yeah. It's time for you to be that man that he needs you to be. Right. I was going to do whatever it takes to get that money. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I, I got to support. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's your boy back again with another episode of Big Boss Talk, the podcast. Again, it's another top-tier guest, TTG, top-tier guest, man. We are ready to go. But listen, man, before we get into it, man, this was a recommended guest by my good friend, uh, Gerard, man. We had him on. His episode has not came out yet, so obviously, if you're watching this, Gerard's episode is out. And then now you can watch this one, uh, Full Effect, but recommended. Um... I'm glad I can get this guy on because I see they do a lot of stuff just kind of like working in the community. Um, really want to tap into some of that. And then also want to get into what you do on the day-to-day, man. Um, and so let me read off who I got. So I got Kevin Crawford the second, age 26. His career slash job is public and media relations manager for the city of Columbia. College degree. Um, he went to North Carolina Central, mass communication concentration, journalism, and minor in business administration. Labor, di- Labor Day. Uh, will make five years. So, bro, Kevin, man, say what's up to the podcast. Hey, man, what's good, y'all? What it do, man? What it do, what it do? What it do, man? I I appreciate you having me on here, man. It's it's truly a blessing, bro. Oh, yeah. Truly. Anytime, man. We got Metro's finest on, so we're going to, you know, we're going to talk it up, but it wouldn't be the podcast, Big Boss Talk, if we didn't do two two truths and a lie. So I'm ready for those three statements whenever you got them. All right, we going uh I'm I'm a two truth it and then I'm a lot. You can't do that. You got to I got to guess the lie. So you got to throw them in any order. Oof. All right. I gave the key to the city to Jay-Z. Okay. Um I got a story behind that though. Okay, that's one. Um, I played in the NCAA tournament. Okay. Um, oof. This one tough. Uh, bro. Um, yes. Oh. Anything, anything. I don't know what's the true, what's a lie. But just give me give me a statement. I'm gonna guess the lie. All right. Still got braces at 26. Still got braces at 26. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Man, I felt like man, you was just on here smiling. I can't remember if you had braces or not. All right. So look, hey. braces at 26. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, can I do the, uh, wait, we can cut this, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I think I might want to. 
I think I might want to do that. Embarrassing too, just to have both of them on here, just in case. Okay, okay, okay. Well, well, let me let me guess. Let me try to guess the live first, and then we're going to embarrassing moment. All right. All right. So you gave Jay, uh, you gave Jay Z the keys to the city. Well, what I mean. So look, when they came down for the, um, they came down for the concert yeah back in like 18 or whatever i had to do you know the key to the city basically like type up the proclamation yeah send it to rock nation you know what i'm saying right make sure approved and you know i was told that you will be given jay-z the key to the city like basically in a nutshell from from my position at working at the city because they had to go through the city yeah to get everything done basically um send it to rock nation bro Day at a concert, yeah, and I don't hear a word. Shit. Don't hear a word, bro. I look on Shade Room, like just like just scrolling on yeah. the gram, you know, you <laughs> looking at Chloe and Bailey perform or whatever. So I was just looking on the gram, and I see Shade Room, bro, and it's like I see the mayor giving him the key to the city, bro, and like the key to the city with the proclamation. Oh my god! So I'm like, bro, there's no way. Like, come that's, on, bro. That's boo boo, man. Hey, that would have been cold, like. I mean, you drew everything up, sent right. it over, and then right. you would have had the chance to just, you know what I'm saying? Like, that would have been epic. Like, that's history for sure. Like, right, right. So I'm looking, I'm like, dang, like, you no, know, I, I done typed up, had to do the, the legwork for it. I can't, I can't even get back there to meet him. Yeah, that's why. Okay, okay. And then, I mean, obviously, I believe the you played in the NCAA tournament. I think that's true. You went to uh, North Carolina Central. Um, and I I want to think they um they made it y'all made it to the tourney um one year I think and so I I think that's true and then yeah 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 no that's true okay um, the last one is the lot in nah actually you still got braces at twenty six retainers I mean hey. okay okay that makes sense I was but, looking, but, I was looking for the hardware yeah 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 but I mean I still count them as braces bro I mean. In college, I obviously I hooped and um, bro, just from getting knocked in the mouth, bro, like that physicality level was totally different coming from high school to jump right there. So, bro, I'm first practice, I see somebody get hit in the eye, Damn. and I'm booted up, like yo, like it's no way this is basketball still. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like kid out there, bro. I'm out there and. Yeah, bro. Got got knocked right in the mouth. Like first practice, came home that weekend. Like I can't. I'm not. I'm done with this. No. But you stuck it. Yeah. Through, yeah. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Facts. So I'm I, when I came home though, I'm taking them out. Like yeah. nah, I'm not going back up there. So eventually, I had to get the retainers, bro. But yeah, I still got them. Okay, that's what's up. So then, I mean, that was good. I mean, that those three statements was solid. Solid as yeah, well. But I want to hear the embarrassing, uh, embarrassing moment though, because now you done brought it up. Hey. Embarrassing moment. All this happened is crazy at the Jay Z concert. Embarrassed, like bro. Ultimately embarrassing. Um, yeah. So let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, me and my girl pull up. You know, we park at State Museum, or whatever for the for the concert. And I mean, bro, the parking lot's packed, bro. Packed. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's ten parties at Adventure Pack type. Of course. Right. So we um. Waiting for the bus because we had to take the Comet shuttle to get to Williamsburg Stadium. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, pre gaming, everybody's ringing in the parking lot, You're doing, doing what they do, bro. For sure. So we get on the bus or whatever. After after everybody had an altercation with the, with the bus driver because he wasn't trying to let nobody on the bus because long tripping. story. He tripping. Right. Big tripping. So we um get on the bus and, like, like you know, when you drink a lot, you know, you got to use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it hit me and I'm sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all right. Yeah. Traffic traffic is crazy. Like going by the fairgrounds. Yeah. Bro, traffic is nuts. Stupid slow. Stupid. Jay-Z and Beyonce in the city. You know traffic yeah, gonna be crazy. Stupid slow. Bro, so I'm like, yo, can, can you grab that trash can right there? You know, it ain't but so much longer I can hold this boy. Right. So bro, miss the trash can. <laughs> Yo, missed it. Where's the, the way it go? Bro, yo. Oh, <laughs> I'm walking. I, I watch scenes walking around the concert like, yeah. No, you're not, bro. 
bro, come on, bro. No. I'm telling you. My girl is like, it's no way you just did this to me. I can't believe you. And then I'm like. Hey, what she say? She had to been on you all, all night. What? <laughs> I broke. And it and it took it, bro. It took me forever to be like, damn, I really did that shit. Yeah. Like I, I'm running into people like, hey Kev, hey Kier, how y'all doing? Y'all all right? Oh. Bro, man. I'm standing there trying to trying to hold my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bro, looking crazy. Like watch jeans on. But that jump was definitely like that, that was definitely like top five. Like that's a solid that, anybody that could be top five most embarrassing things that ever happened. Like that was embarrassing. Man, that would have been number one for me. Like, you yeah, on the facts. bus, you know what I'm saying? You trying to hold it in, can't hold it in. Next facts. thing you know, you missed the trash can. Like, I'm like, oh man, I, yeah, hey. that would have been that would have been number one for me, hands down. But that's just something you'll never forget. And it's just one of those remarkable moments because he was at the Jay Z Beyonce concert. Who knows when they'll come back through? So as long as you ain't missed the concert, you good. Hey, what 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 Denzel say? I'm leaving with something. I'm leaving with something. <laughs> I'm leaving with something. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? I'm running away. I'm with something. I'm leaving with something. For sure, mm -hmm. man. That's what's up. But I that's that's good, man. I appreciate both of those. Uh, you know, it's kind of the best. I should start getting people to do both because that was pretty good. But I got like three questions for you, man. Um, I want to get you like a, a quick response. Um, you know, just take 10, 15 seconds to let me know or answer these questions, right? So I, for number one, uh, I know um, you were pops, you know, pretty early, man. And I know you do a lot of big things with your son. Like y'all like, that's your right hand man, your best friend. Um, what is it like being a dad, man? At a, especially hey, at an early hey. age. Hey, I could write a book on it, bro. Like that that's a that's a we'll be on here all day. Bro, being a dad, man, is is I'm learning along the way. Yeah, for sure. He learned along with me. Like he gonna grow up and be like, yo, I grew up with my pops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. I'm I'm still like it's it's pros and cons to it. Okay. Um but the good outweigh the bad, most definitely. And it's and it's never any bad. I never look at the bad. Yeah. I look at it as a learning lesson, you feel me? Yeah. Every every step of the way we learning, but my ultimate goal for me, like as a father, is basically to just have my son, you know, in a better position than I was when I came into the world. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, what whatever I can do to help him be a better man than me is that's that's it. You won that's as it. a as a dad. Like you won. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you break it down to that's the, the the simplest form of just like you want your kids in a better position than you were. Like, you won, like, hands down. And so I think that's, you know, it's pretty dope, man. And and I know, like you said, it comes with the pros and cons. But I think it's, it, like you said, it's a beautiful thing when you can be able to, you know, you, you when as your son get older, he going to be like, dang, I really grew up with my dad. You know what I'm saying? It's going right. to, the bond going to be, you know, inseparable. Like, I my oldest brother has that bond with my dad. Like, my dad had my youngest brother when he was 20. So, like, they kind of grew up together. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, just to this day, like, they... I don't know, they twins, automatic. And then I know um, having Gerard, you know what I'm saying, kind of in a similar situation, you know, having his daughter, different situations, but having kids at an early age, I'm pretty sure, do y'all ever, like, collaborate, you know, be able to bounce things off? Like, maybe you're having a bad day. Like, man, what you did, you know, what you did in this situation? What you did in that situation? Hey, I'm going to be honest. No matter how how your day go, they don't care. You feel me? Yeah. This come home, you got you to gotta put it back on. Yeah. Like, like dad, I want to go play. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. we can have a conversation though, but it's still like you know, dad. Like I, I, I want to play right now, <laughs> basically. Yeah. But and and that, and that's my time. You know what I'm saying? That's my time for for to decompress. That's my time to get away from the world. Whatever I'm going through that day, you know. When he does that, it's like, okay, bet. that's my boy. Yeah, let's do it. Come <laughs> on. Yeah, you, and I, you ain't even got to ask me how my day was. Yeah, for sure, man. And then the second question is, as a as a former hooper, I mean, I don't know if you're still hooping or not, right? Oh, yeah, I get it in. I get it in. Oh, you get it in. All right, bet. So who do you mimic your game after? Like, if there's one player in the NBA, you could say, like, I'm pretty similar to this cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, who would it be? Um, mm, I'm going to be honest. I kind of play like – I play like Mike Conley. Okay, word for the I'll people. Like that, for people that don't know who Mike Conley is, explain explain Mike Conley's game. Mike Conley is a smooth, 
vet. He's a facilitator on the court. You know, mm-hmm. his doms are nice. Yeah. He has a he, his IQ is high. Granted, he's not he might not be the best athlete on the court. Right. But his IQ overpowers the athleticism. Any day. He um man, he 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 aged he aged over time. The 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 older he get, the better he get. Yeah, that's and, a fact. Yeah, the older I got, you know, the better I got get. it on me still. Yeah, yeah, he said he still got it on him. Oh. Yeah. Hey, I like it. I like it. So uh Mike Conley, so then that brings me to the next question is who is your favorite? NBA player, like I, I want to know who your favorite player is right now, and then who's your your goat. I feel like I know the answer, but my favorite player of all time. Yeah, so favorite player that's playing currently right now, and okay. then and then your favorite player of all time. My favorite player playing currently right now is Bron Steele. Okay, gotcha. Um, and my favorite. AI. AI. Yeah, hands down. I did not expect that. Yeah, AI is my favorite player ever. Pound for pound. One of the best. Pound for pound. And it's it's not only the pound for pound, it's what he brought to the game. You know what I'm saying? Like coming up, yeah. everybody wanted to bro. Like Come on, you, you feel me? Like everybody, <laughs> yeah. uh, AI, like he he was doing what he wanted. I feel like he's like he was like Mike Vick when he we was. was coming up. Yeah, he was like Mike Vick, right? Yeah, Mike Vick, and they from the same uh, city, Virginia. Right, bro. It was like they both came in. Everybody wanted to be AI. Everybody wanted to be Vick. The tattoos, the, the head tattoos, man, like you know, head and braid. Vick was nice. The scrap, like, come on, man. You playing with him at 04 on Matt? That's <laughs> easy work. <laughs> easy, because all I'm gonna easy. do is I'm, I'm going out the pocket and we gone. Scram. Word. Okay, that's what's up. Last question. What's one thing you can do every day, bro? Like, besides sleeping, like, what's one thing that you enjoy doing every single day? Oh, being with my son. For sure. That's easy. Simple. 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 All right, well, cool. So, we're going to hop right into it, man. So, I always like to ask this question. Um, it, it, it's because it's educational, bro. I, I really hope that one day, you know, you know, as this podcast kind of continues to grow, continues to develop, it's for kids, bro, uh, to give them exposure because exposure leads to expansion. Um, and hopefully one day, you know, your son can maybe, you know, watch your episode and learn something about his dad that maybe he didn't know. Maybe he finds a gym like, you know what I'm saying? My dad was this. My dad was that. You know what I mean? And that's kind of why I do it um, just because I want kids to have something to look at where they can never say, oh, I didn't know this was out here. I didn't know this existed. Um, because, you know, I want to talk to every single person and every single career path to make sure they have the tools and they're going to look like us. You know what I mean? It's not going right. to come from somebody different that doesn't look like them. It's going to come from, you know, black and, you know, black and brown women and men that's doing being successful. So what did Kevin want to be? Growing up, you know what I'm saying? Like, what was your childhood dream? Obviously, you're a hooper, so I feel like hooping was probably one of the main dreams. But what did you see yourself being as you got older? Honestly, bro, I wanted to be an architect. Really? I wanted to be a growing up. Um, I'll pay attention whenever, like, we used to take family trips. Whenever I'm, it's still to this day, whenever I'm on a bus, I pay attention to, like, buildings. You know, wherever I'm at, I'm really good with yeah. locating where I'm at. I can tell you. Look, you right here. You need to make a left here. Yeah. Type walk it, walk in GPS, bro. For real. That's crazy. Okay. Arch- but um, yeah, bro. I, I pay attention to building structures. I I don't know. I'm just I I, I like building structures, bro. It's weird. Yeah. I just I just pay attention to my surroundings and all. I mean, you got to got to be on your p's and q's. But what, right. so what changed though? So I mean, obviously you want to be an architect, but when did that kind of you know kind of like I ain't going to say fade away. I'm just going to say, like, you know, what made you go into, what changed your mind? You know what I'm saying? Like, why didn't we stick with architect? Oh, I'm a, I'm a great writer. I'm a great writer. Um, yeah, yeah. When I, when I realized I didn't want to do architect, I hate math. Mm. I hate math, bro. Mm. Like, 
but I love the structure of buildings. Not right. that I'm saying that I was bad at math, but I just never really liked math. Like, right. I, ooh, I hated it. Like, pre-algebra, all that, bro. I hated it. Geometry was probably the best one because it was structures. Structures, yeah, shapes, all right. that. But it was, bro, it was, yeah. Um, my English teacher from seventh grade and eighth grade, she made me fall in love with writing. What you love about it? Bro, just putting words on paper, honestly. Just seeing the creativity, because I'm like, I can spell, I, I can, yeah, I can't really talk for real, but you know, I, I can spell better than I can talk, basically. Bro, that's crazy. So that's my profession, and my that's what carried on to college. For sure. That, you don't really see that a lot, right? So a lot of times when you think about this um, certain skill sets where, you know, guys may be stronger in, in this area versus, you know, women stronger than this area. I'll tell you, I'm I'm kind of like the opposite, right? Like, I'm not going to say I love math, but I can do math. And then if I, if I can, you know, if I can do it and somebody can show me, you know, how to get everything done, I can remember it and then, you know, go from there. But as far as right. like writing, I can't stand writing. I don't like putting, like grammar is not my thing. Like autocorrect be slamming me all the time. Like my girl, yeah. she's a grammar geek. So I'm like, all right, just be quiet. Cause I know, you know what I'm trying to say, but it just ain't, it didn't come out that way. So I'm like, when you said, you know, you love writing and just the creativity um, and just and just writing, what's one of the first things that you ever wrote that you can remember off the top of your head? Like just, Maybe it's a story, maybe it's a, a memoir, maybe it was a paper, like a, a bibliography uh, paper, whatever um, it may be. We had to, I forgot the name of the book, but we had to read a book and relate it to our favorite song. Mm -hmm. I was in seventh grade. Yeah. This is when I fell in love with it. And the book related to the song Everything I Am by Kanye West. Mm. So I wrote you know, you had to write the lyrics on the page. Right. And writing the lyrics on the page and, you know, listening to the lyrics is totally different. Yeah. When you're reading the lyrics, bro, it's like, it's no, like, is, is he, like, is he really saying this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm just crazy. So at the time, you know, like, I, I love music. Music is the next best thing to me. You got you. Uh, ooh, so it might be number one, bro. Yeah. I, th I, I like thrive off music. Okay. So, those lyrics on that page it's like bro this man Kanye is a genius bro and I'm I can write like <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote this on the page you know what I'm saying I'm gonna keep writing and, and it the lyrics on the page made me got me an A on the paper because I wrote how I actually felt you know what I'm saying sure. it was genuine sure. versus actually feeling like it was a assignment okay that's what's up so when you talk about you know obviously we still talking about writing uh, what do you prefer to write the most like is it poetry you know what i'm saying is it stories is it like is there a certain thing that you could just write about like you know what i'm saying like that you could just do a, a spare hobby like i don't know if you write poetry i don't know if you write you know little stories maybe little clips maybe if you put uh -oh. rhymes together speeches i like writing speeches oh that's cool yeah i like writing speeches that's cool. Okay, so we got speeches. So now we already know what you like to do. So we we went from architect, architect, fell in love with writing, seventh and eighth grade. You know what I'm saying? We going off to college. Um, obviously, um, you talked a little bit about college, just the experience from bas from a basketball standpoint, going from high school to um, to North Carolina Central. Tell me about, you know, how did you end up picking North Carolina Central as the college that you wanted to go to? Was it strictly based off the scholarship that you uh, might have gotten from basketball, or did you have that school in mind already? Um, So I didn't have no offers coming out of uh, school, bro. It was – I had looks, but, I mean, it was like nothing. Yeah. So I'm in high school, and I'm like, yo, like, I'm hooping. Like, you know, I'm – I'm, this is what I do. Like, yeah. What is going on here? Like, how is he getting? What What is going on yep. at the time? Yeah. So, I'm I'm going crazy, like trying to hit up all these camps, doing this and that. So it just so happened that North Carolina Central sent me something to the crib. Okay. And um, it was for the elite camp. Yeah. So 
bro, it's it's crazy because this was the last hope. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. do like it's either you hoop or you you. It's over here. Yeah, it's over. And it always stuck with me that after I left my last game in I mean in high school, my high school coach Coach Washington was like, "Some of y'all will never put on a jersey for a team again." And that stuck with me for like. That's the worst I mean, thing ever. Right. Bro, that stuck with me. So I'm like, nah, he ain't talking about me. <laughs> Heck no, he ain't talking about me. <laughs> he ain't talking about me. You feel me? He talking about you, my boy. Right. I'm leaving with something. <laughs> I'm leaving with something. <laughs> so, bro, I get to this elite camp. I mean, and it's central like three or four hours away. Three and a half to be exact. Mm-hmm. And my mom and my dad drove me up there. And I could just remember sitting in the back seat. I'm just like, nah, like, care. Like when you do this, yeah, I get central, bro. I go crazy. Mm. I go crazy. What's the stat line? You got a stat line, or you just saying like overall out of everybody yeah, there, I went crazy. Yeah, just overall everybody. So I went off so bad to the fact that coach Coach Mo and he walked in the stands and was and like asking my parents, like you know, just asking the people in general, yeah. like who is. My parents finally was like, well, you know, that's our son or whatever. And he was like, well, what you know, when is he? What grade is he in? And she was like, well, he just enrolled here. So he was like, all right, tell him to come see me. So my parents told me the whole story, told me to go see him. They was like, you better go see him. Yeah, so, you better go see him. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, all right, yeah, like, yeah, let's get it. I'm in the backseat of the car. Like, yeah, I, did it. I told y'all. Stop playing. <laughs> right looking at the mirror and myself, like, I told you. Yeah. 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 So we um come back uh our first day of school. I'm not Forget class. I'm going to see coach. Yeah. Yeah. Went right to see him. 8 a.m. He, was, um, he wasn't in there. <laughs> he wasn't in there. So went back. The assistant coach was like, you know, coach told me about you. Come to the tryout. Mm-hmm. So went to the tryout. He was like, you know, you don't have to try out, but you just got to go through the motion or whatever. You know, we got to do this standard procedure. So yeah. went to the tryout. Bro, I... You know how you don't work out for a long time and your back be tight? Yeah. That's what happened? You locked up? Oh. <laughs> that was another, locked up. Hey, another embarrassing moment. <laughs> another embarrassing yeah. moment. But, yeah, that's that's really how that's how that's how I got on. So, basically, I walked on the team. That's what's up. Walk. So, you walked on. Yep. Man, I mean, being a, like, even just being a walk-on, bro, like, it's, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a... An accomplishment in itself, bro. Like, not only was you not given, you know what I'm saying, a scholarship, right? But you had to go, you had one opportunity. It's like the Eminem song, like, you had one shot. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you went in there, killed it on the first shot. Coach said, man, come see me. And he went to go see him. Wasn't there, obviously, but he was like, come try out. You know what I'm saying? Go through the motion. And you did, but, you know what I'm saying, obviously, you locked up. But you had such a great performance the first time, you know, they were just like, man, come on, man, we'll get you in shape. So, um, what was it like um, playing uh, on a, you know, on that team? You know what I'm saying? Like, how important oh. was it? Like, to oh. You? oh man, it, it was, it was, it was amazing, bro. Like, I was a like a true freshman. Yeah. On that team, um, I mean, bro. From start to finish, like soon as I got to that school, like I remember I was telling you how like I was like, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Seeing people hit in the face, like they that's when I really found out the true definition of accountability. Okay. Like they really held everybody accountable, man. And it was it taught me a lot my freshman year because I'm used to playing, I'm used to, you know, throwing dimes, being the man. Yeah. Bro, I, it was tough, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Because they, it's a, it's a winning tradition. It's it a tough. system. Yeah, you got to go and play the system, man. It ain't like high school where right. you can just kind of coach be like, all right, you got the green light. You know what I mean? Like, it ain't like that. So uh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So uh, appreciate that. So we got the North Carolina Central. Uh, great experience there. Um, obviously, we played ball. Uh, you played all four years, right? Nah, I didn't play my third. I mean, my senior year. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Didn't, yep. the scene, didn't play the senior, but cool. And then as far as just the – talk to me about being at North Carolina Central, the school. Like, outside of basketball, like, you know, how was the school? Like, obviously, everybody done heard stories. I heard stories North Carolina Central. You know, it's in the hood, um, it, which most black colleges are. 
in the hood. Um, but you know, they say it's in the hood. You know what I'm saying? How did you feel, you know, educational-wise, like, coming out of school? Did you feel like you were prepared for the world ahead of you? Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily school-wise, but, you know, me going to an HBCU, shit, I'm not prepared for that all your life, you feel me? Yeah. Um, school-wise, it was an eye-opener, because now it's like, you know, no, nobody's here to wake you up. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, no friends. You got to start fresh. Start over. Yeah. But um, I learned quick. I learned. I learned real quick, and um, I adapted, bro. And it was. It was. A, it was a great time. They take care of you at an HBCU for sure. That's beautiful. That, that, I don't care what HBCU. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. They take care of you. Yeah. That's what I wanted and to hear. They take care of you, bro. And it, it yeah. was. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I had some of the best times in my life in college, bro. And it wasn't. You know, it, I learned a lot. That and that really translated to really who I am today, because it was it was you got to get it. You, it's grinding, man. It's, right. You, you, you got to get it. You grinding, especially playing a sport too. It's on top of that. You know what I mean? Like your your schedule already hectic. Then you got to go to class. You got to you know keep up with everything. So it, it's it's a grind for sure. Um, but I definitely wanted to hear you say that North Carolina Central. You know they took care of you because you know I talked to a lot of people that went to HBCUs and they. They go up about their HBCU, man. Like they, Bro. they just be like, man, nepotism. You know what I'm saying? To the fullest extent, like black people taking care of black people. Like if you had a professor and you tight with them, and they had an opportunity for you, they probably gonna throw your name in there. You know what I'm saying? Like they not, right. they gonna throw you in. They gonna put you in the right spots to be successful. So that's beautiful to see. Coming out of college, right? We graduated. Did you go straight back home? Did you have a job coming straight out of college? What was that experience like? So graduated 2017, um, May, came home, and I told I gave myself a month to find something. Mm-hmm. So I, I used to work at Lady Foot Locker when I was in high school. Yeah. So my the old manager from there went to the foot action at Harbison. Okay. So I hit her up and you know, I last resort. I'm I couldn't find nothing at this point. I'm searching on zip recruiter, I'm doing everything. everything. Like, yeah. I need it. So I hit her up and she like, she was like, yeah, um, you can come back here and work for a little bit or whatever. So I was working there up until about, I want to say July. And um, that's when I started working at the city of Columbia. Okay. But I didn't start. I went, I went to city of Columbia in July, but I didn't officially start until September, okay. Labor Day. Got you. But um, that's, that's a, that's a whole nother story. How I got that. Yeah, I mean, we we here for it all, man. We um, I really want to know your mindset coming out of college and just going back home, knowing at the time you 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 had your son, right? Right, right. So at the time you got responsibilities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not only, you know, what I'm saying, I, I, I like the responsibilities of taking care of you know of a child. Um, obviously you graduated, got your degree. You like, man, I need to be out here making this bread like ASAP. You know what I'm saying? Like yesterday. What was your mental going through? Because I know being, you know, a black male, like we hear the stuff, right. we hear the things on social media, like you know, some baby daddies ain't ain't this, they ain't that, like you know, they ain't showing up. But you know, that's the total opposite from you, man. So I, I just want to know mentally, where were you during that time where you had to go back, you know, be humble enough to say, man, let me reach out to my old manager and hop back in on this foot action until something opened up for me, because a lot of people wouldn't do that. Right, bro. That 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 was the grind. Mm-hmm. Um, graduating, bro. I'm I'm like, you no. Know, I need to make sure he's straight at all times. Yeah. You know, I was in college. My girl held it down. I, I she held it down. Word. My family held it down. Her family held it down. So you know, it was it was no complaints at all. Mm-hmm. But when I when I graduated, I knew all right. Let me let me. It, it's time. Yeah. It's time for you to be that man that he needs you to be. Right. I was gonna do whatever it takes to get that money. You feel me? Yeah. Like I, I gotta support. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And when you say by, I mean, obviously, when you say, I mean, I, we hear any by any means necessary, right? Right. And I just want to kind of set the you know set the record of this part as far as like where how how you know we think or how you was thinking. When I, when you say anything necessary, what were you willing to do to make sure you put food on your son's you know plate? Oh, any anything, bro. It, 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 legally, right? <laughs> you feel me? Right. Any anything. I mean, 
bro, if I needed to work at McDonald's just to get it, just to get it, bro, I'm doing it. Yeah. He got to eat. That's a fact. You know, the, he's growing. Mm-hmm. It ain't about me no more. It was, it was stop being about me in 2015. That's crazy. Yeah. It stopped being about me when I was 20 years old, bro. Like it hit home. Yeah. Like let's get it. Yeah. That's crazy, man. I shout out to you, man. Cause a lot of like, that's hard, bro. 2015. I mean, you 20 years old, like, that's hard to just say, yeah, all right, it ain't about me no more. Because, th- right, at that point, them your selfish years, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is about me at this point, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be out here, you know, doing my thing, living. Not saying you wasn't, but at the back of your mind, you know that I got responsibility, you know what I mean? And I got people holding it down for me to make sure, yeah. I, to make sure I get this get this done. And so, I mean, that's a big responsibility, bro. So, shout out to you, man. And um, it's a lot of fathers out there, a lot of young fathers out there that's doing the same thing. Um, and we just want to salute them and just remember, like, you know, stay solid. You know, don't fall into the... Um, what, I mean, I'm not a father. You should be telling them, like, you know, what advice can you give them to be, like, keep your mind on the right track? Because you said, hey. I'm doing anything legally. It's some people that'll do anything illegally and legally to make it happen. Hey, man, look, I'm, I'm going to just say this. Your son, your daughter looks at you as, you know, uh, the superhero. Mm-hmm. You control the narrative. It's, it's, bro, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. I know I'm, I might have to come back. I might have to come back, bro. Yeah. It's every, everything is going, everything is going, bro. Yeah. I, I just, bro, it's, it's, it's tough, man, because, Bro, like I just I love being a dad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love being a dad, bro. It's 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 it, it ain't nothing like <laughs> ain't nothing it. Like, it's, I, it's bro, all- like I give up all this for him. You yeah. feel me? Like and, and just me saying that alone should should really hit home for for fathers, you know, mothers, anybody that that's out here going through the struggle. Because if anybody been through the struggle, like I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. You feel me? Like 19. You know, it's it's bro, it's tough, bro. Like it's tough. Yeah, it's I feel you. Yeah, but man. you gonna make it. Yeah, for sure. Gonna, that's it. Hey, that's the gym right there, man. You gonna make it at the end of the day, um, as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other, man. Each and every single day. All right. So you told me there was a story behind getting to where you work today. Um, if you can, if if you can shorten it, I would love to hear. The short version of just how you got to being a public and media relationships manager for the city of Columbia. And then once you explain how you got that role, tell the people what you do on a day-to-day basis. Um, so how I got the job at the city. Um, my parents been in business for 32 years, chemical company, and they have different businesses that they, you know, mm-hmm. deliver to. Yeah. Um I had to make a delivery to City Hall one day and, you know, my grandma is telling me like, look, with, with my dad and my grandma making a delivery and she's telling me like, look, you know, I know the assistant city manager at the time, um, you know, I can introduce you to him, you get right. Yeah. So he introduced me to him and, you know, I, he was asking me just, you know, standard questions, surface questions like, what's your name, where you graduated from, you know when'd you graduate type so i yeah. told him all that it was like oh okay and at this point it's july okay so he was like well i got a perfect person for you to meet take me down there to meet the pr director yeah so i walk in the office and she's in her she has like a little loft area to the to her office yeah. so i'm sitting there in the waiting room just waiting and she's like i'll be out there in a minute so i can hear to her voice that she's a black lady yeah and she walks out the office and it is. So she <laughs> sat down. It's like, you know, I, I'm I'm dressed in delivery, you know, I, shorts, hoodie. Right. And she's like, how can I help you? <laughs> and I'm right. Just out the gate. Like, how can I help you? Damn. And I'm like, well, you know, the assistant city manager brought me down here to meet you. You know, my name's Kevin Crawford. You know, nice to meet you. Yeah. And she was like, oh, OK. Wow. Like, can I help you? And I'm like, nice to meet you, um, Miss Yusey. Her name is Miss Yusey. She, I was like, nice to meet you. So I left out. My dad was like, what's up with you? And I told him the story of what happened when I walked in there. 
So he was like, well, just send, you know, a, a thank you email for the time or whatever. So I'm like, I'm not sending that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I sent the email. <laughs> I sent the email. Did he so send the email? He, he me back. But I, how I sent the email was like, you know, thank you for your time. If there are any openings, please let me know. I'm, you know, into, interested in a job. Yeah. She emailed me back August. Mm, July, August. Uh, okay, so next month. Yeah, it was probably like late August. Okay. She emailed me. And um, she was like, hey, we, we don't have any jobs open right now. Thank you for the interest, but we do have an apprenticeship. So I told my dad and my mom, I'm like, she want me to come do an apprenticeship. That's not paid. I'm not doing that. <laughs> and my parents are like, oh, no, your ass is going to that apprenticeship. <laughs> well, Shout out to mom right. and dad. Right, right. So I go to the apprenticeship. And um, I mean, bro, after the, I work the first week and on that Friday, bro, she called me in her office. She was like, you got the job. I just want to see if you're going to come. Wow. So she tested that's how you. I got City. She tested you. Yeah, bro. She yeah. Said, and um are you willing to work for free? Right. And that's another reason why I had it in the back of my head like I would do anything. Bro. And then I mean shout, but you shout out shout out to your mom and dad for saying right, right, right. nah, you going. Cause you would have right. been like, man, she out here tripping, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get yeah, you to work tripping. for free. Like But yeah, I, it was like, yeah, come on. Bro, that's huge. Like, I mean, that's that's that in itself. Like, bro, every story you done told me, bro, is like I'm picking up major just life gems, bro. That people that if they watching, they can really be like, don't be. Yeah. If it's something that you want out here, man. Don't be afraid bro, to go get it. You are gonna have to forgive me. This is my first podcast, so you know I'm a little yeah, a little little, little nervous, but yeah. Man, we, we doing good, <laughs> man. I mean, man, I can't believe you said that, bro. We doing we, good. We, we could. That. Yeah, we just we just talking, man. But I, I mean, like I said, I think that's that's a solid gem, though, man. Like if you, when you really just, I mean, you ain't got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? Like uh -huh. at, at the end of the day, it's just like you can go in here be an apprenticeship. You don't know what's gonna come out of it, but at least you're gonna have some type of, I guess you could say, um, history. Uh, what's the thing? Not history, but uh, experience. All right. And then once you get that experience, who knows may what could come out of that. But the lady said, I mean, you had the job. I just wanted to see if you were going to come in here and work for free. Right, bro. She, cold, and, she a cold player. And, bro, to this day, that lady is by my side, bro. Like, she's a warrior. And, I'm, like, bro, I'm ten toes for her, bro. Yeah. I've learned for her than I, like, bro, she is, bro, like, she, she near and dear. Bro. That's so hard. Near and dear, Shout out to, shout out to, um, what's the lady, what's her name? Director Yusey, Leisha Yusey, man. Director Yusey, man. Shout out to her, man, because that's player for real. So, when what you do on a day to day basis, man? What does your job consist of? Um, so, worked at City Hall for two years, left City Hall. Now I'm the park, Parks and Recreation Public and Media Relations Manager. Okay. Um, for the City of Columbia. I cover, you know, all the parks. I do press releases for them. Mm -hmm. I do a publication, um, speeches, proclamations. Mm -hmm. I do a number of things, but on a day-to-day -day basis, basically I walk in the office, yep. check the computer, make sure I ain't got no emails, man. Gotta take you know, emails. The emails. Yep. Gotta emails. Um, uh, and if I do, because usually I do have some of my emails, which is probably like do a flyer, um, you know, check this flyer, mm -hmm. or can we get these done, or some trophies that got to be done, or whatever for um, the the leagues, the yeah, summer leagues, league, so like, the camps and stuff. Yeah, the youth leagues. I can't, I can't even get it out. But um, yeah, bro, it's it's always something on the go, bro. And if in my downtime, you know, I do um. I go in the parks and take pictures, do photography and stuff. So okay, that's yeah, that's how I get I get my photography skills up, man. When whenever you know, so if you need a little something, you know, yeah, <laughs> I got you, I got you, man. You gonna have to come to Houston. Hey, man, I'm down there. Yeah, you gonna have to come to Houston. I got you, but hey, um, that's what's up. So, what? Who, I guess it, it falls into everything that you kind of enjoy to do. You know what I'm saying? You you love to write. I feel like, you know, as far as like in the role that you are now, you probably do a lot of, like you say, publications, a little writing, press releases, things of that nature. So it kind of falls in line. Um, 
I do want to ask, like, you know, what makes you, you know, I guess what do you, what what makes you successful at your job? Because obviously there's a a skill that has to come with it. You know what I mean? Like it's not like a a warehouse job where you just go in, boom. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 a skill set that comes with your job. So what makes you good at what you do? Um, and then what type of individual will have success in your role? Um, you can't be, you cannot be afraid to say no. Mm. It, it, you feel me? It's, this ain't a yes man job. Got you. Give yeah. me an example. Um, what you mean? Give me an example. People, you know, I deal with the media a lot. Yeah. I deal with, you know, um, a, a number of people, bro. I'm, I'm the face of. You know, whenever whenever some media trying to come, they got they got I have to talk to them. They got to holler at you. So they ask questions that you know that aren't supposed to be asked, and I I'm the the bulldog. Ooh. Send me send me those questions before you send them to the assistant city manager. Send me those questions before they get to my director. I need to see what they are basically. Right. And they not you know what they need to be, then we ain't going forward with this interview. Damn. Um, but they they for I, I haven't had to do it in a while. They they understand. Yeah. And it's and I don't come off rude. I try not to. Yeah. Um I would say, hmm. Yeah, you get yeah, tough skin. Tough skin is number one, obviously. Um, dang. You gotta be able to, to adapt quick too. Okay. Quick adaption. Because um anything could go wrong at any given time. Yeah, I've been in the middle of a press conference and I forgot to run a show. So now they get up there to the podium and they're like, you know, who's next to speak? Right, like the mayor. You know, it, it, it could be it's like that. Time. The mayor could speak. And, right, and it's a big time. You in a bit on a big time stage too. Right, or or just something little as you are supposed to take up. You are supposed to be only taking pictures of the mayor, or you only supposed to be taking pictures of one council member. And that one council member will come and ask you for a picture that you don't have. Ooh. That's something like you have to be very like and that's number three. You gotta pay attention to detail. Okay. Gotta pay attention because to detail. Because my my first week there, it was um they were doing voting. It was they were voting. Okay. And I put the wrong time. I put you're supposed to come at um eight AM instead of seven AM. Right. All on social media. We got like 40,000 followers on social media. On uh, Twitter, I put it out there. You're supposed to come at 8 a.m. I got fried for that. Mm. That's crazy. Keep it to the fire. <laughs> so every since then, it's like, yo, like every little detail matters. Like anything can mess up. You put the wrong M in a mayor, in a mayor name. You put the wrong M in a council member name. They coming for your head. So it's, it's but it's, um. Do I you, love it though. Do you, you? I was gonna ask you. Do you love it? I love it. I love it. Do you feel like you doing? You feel like you doing what you you meant to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, do you or do you feel like you have a other passion or a other something that you might want to get out the ground? I, 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 cause some people just. I mean, it's some people naturally love what they do. Like sometimes you look up and just find like, man, I love what I'm doing. Like I know it got some ups and downs, but in totality of what I do. Like, I, I can't see myself doing nothing else. So, like, do you get that feeling? Or is it, do you have other aspirations outside of just, you know, what you do? Oh, bro, I, I have high aspirations. Yeah. Um, I love what I do, but this is not ultimately what I want to do. So, what's the ultimate? The ultimate goal is what I'm doing now with Random Days. Yep, I was waiting for you to mention that. Yeah, bro. I'm, I'm, I want to propel that to like a whole nother level, bro. Like, and can I speak on that? Or you yeah, still want me to speak on that? Listen, we here to talk about you, my boy. Talk, yeah. Tell me about these. I wanted you to go into, that's why I asked the question so I can kind of get what Random Days was about. So, you know, I'm hey, good at I'm good at asking questions. You good at writing? I'm just good at damn, talking. You damn so I'm just, right, I'm just good at talking. You you can write, I just talk. So you let me know. Random Days. Tell me about Random Days and what sparked that idea. You know what I'm saying? How did it come about? I want to know everything about it, man. So that way when people watch, they know what Random Days is. Bro, Random Days, man, it was... 
I mean, it, bro, it was it was something that's been in my head since I was in college, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, bro, I come home and I'm starting to, I realize, like, being in, the, in my job that I work in, you know, I'm going to the Black Expo. I'm covering that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm covering the Jubilee Festival. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm covering Black events. Yeah. But the thing about it is, Bro, the Black Expo, you know, I love it. I, you know, I shouts to, you know, Mr. Darren Thomas because he does an excellent job. But what kills me is these people and, bro, these people come to see, I feel like they come to see, you know, hit the Hill Harper or, you know, Derek yeah. Luke or if, you know, Grant Hill is their Master P or something. I mm-hmm. feel like they come to see them instead of coming to show love to the vendors. You know what I'm saying? Because I see these vendors put their hard work into what they do, bro. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Black Expo, they put that on a high pedestal, in which they should because it's a hell of an event. Yeah. Like, you can't lose. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't. And it's it's like a big act comes and it's like, dang, we just lost out on what we could have made because Master P is here or, you know, it's taking it's, somebody's somebody's it's, there. It's taking away from the purity, right? Like you're taking away from the essence of what's going on, what's supposed to be happening here. Right. A black ex, um, Jubilee Festival. I work that, but I'm gonna be honest, bro. White people can't tell me about my history. Mm. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Like historic, historic Columbia is over that, and white people can't tell me about my history. And and there's no shade to them either, but that's just the facts. Right. White people tried to tell us about our history ever since we was in what elementary school in the books, right? And they was wrong. They was wrong, bro. Like they they leave they leaving out a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a fact. Um, I was like, well, nah, like so I put all those in the factor, bro, and I really realized that our children, not sounding selfish, but my son really has nowhere or no, nothing to look forward to annually. Mm. So I was like, well, dang, let me let me think of something. So, you know, I come in contact with all these vendors, being that I still work for the city, black vendors, bro, that are like, here's my car, do this, let's do that. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we about to do it. Like, I hit up all these vendors. Yeah. And I'm like, what I want to do for y'all, like, free entry, you know, y'all y'all eat, this for y'all. Yeah. Put a little performance on, and, um, you know, the, the city was fortunate to help me out with it with the park yeah. and all but i did it on page ellington park because that's not one of the only parks in the city named after a black man mm. and nobody knows that that boy thank you deep Ooh. yeah bro yeah bro and um bro i i i think it's something that's that's we're gonna keep it going for sure we're gonna yeah. keep it going for sure. man we got it. you got to bro, man Hey, listen. We gonna keep it going. I need to know. Um, you say it's is it, is it an an, it's an annual thing right now, like a yeah, it's thing? an annual thing, bro. And um, I don't mean to cut you off. You good? But I I want my my ultimate goal was to really like. You can't ignore what's going on here. Like you can't ignore what we got going on. Mm-hmm. Like I, I want the mayor to come out there. Like I want I want the governor to come out there. Like I need to see this. Like what are they doing out here? Why yeah. do they keep doing this? Yeah, and we ain't doing nothing but but supporting our people. That is, that's it. So I'm saying like from vendors to music, everything is all black. And I'm not a racist, but I just believe in bigging up my people because right. if I see you grinding and I'm on the same hustle, that we gonna get it together. Like we all we got, bro. It ain't. It shouldn't be a negative outlook that black people want to look out for their own kind. Like every other race do it, bro. Like right. Asians, Chinese. White people, like you know, what I'm saying they do it, but it's just right. like it, it seems like every time we talk about it, like we be scared to be like you know all black or you know this is a black right. event, you know what I'm saying? And we shouldn't have to be you know tiptoeing around the world or try to be inclusive, right? If if you want it to be for black people, then cool, it could be for black people, but I guarantee you, other races gonna want to be a part of it because they always want to be a part of our culture. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like they. They're going to take everything else, you know, how we look, you know what I'm saying, the, the shapes that we, you know, that our bodies form. Like, you know, it it, it just comes from us. Like, we we inspire so many people. So, bro, keep doing it and make it the annual. Man, like, 
if once I figure out, like, if man, I would love to just come, bro, and just see it in person, bro, like, and just because I'm from Rock Hill, South Carolina, so Columbia ain't nothing but up the road, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, a little skip and a hop, a little skip and a hop. It's just really coming back home from Houston and going back. And so, my goal next year is with the podcast is to not only do the sit downs, but I want to start going into schools, right? I want to start going into schools next and just letting kids know like, hey, you know, if you need help, you need, you know, ideas of what you want to be, you know, you want raw experience, you want to, you want to know the game, the knowledge, the good, the bad that come with each and every single um, career path, you know, just check us out. You can see in the highlights every single body that we talk to, their Instagram name, so you have a contact, you got a reference point to start. Um, and just giving them those tools to, you know, be able to access um, and have fun. So, like, that's the goal for next year. But back to random days, man. I love what you're doing, man, um, as far as, like, the vendors and, and, and keeping that going. Um, what do you feel like you need to make random days blow up, man? Like, what, what do you feel like? You, you, know, you talk about the governor. You talk about the mayor. Like, what do you need? What do you feel like you need that's going to set it off or take you to the top with random days? Um the city on my side, man, for real. You yeah. feel me? Like, everything I'm doing is for us. Like, I'm not, I don't want nothing in return. I can, I can care about, I don't care about the bread, bro. Like, yeah. I just want something annually where our children can be like, yo, like, our people started this. Like, yo, like, Kaden to be like, yo, my dad, like, he's, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I can be like, yo, my, her, his daughter can be like, yo, my dad was a part of this, or you know, my dad did this, or, yeah. you know, you have a son, you like, yo, I, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, it's for us. Yeah. I'm not with the, I, I don't care about the, the the popularity contest. I don't care about all that, bro. I, I just want us to win, like, and we got enough people in the city to do it. Yeah. And that's all I get people to realize is, bro, we don't have to go to Atlanta. We don't have to go to Charlotte. We don't have to go to Florida. We can do it right here in the city. We just make it ours, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, it's. Why you feel like people don't think like that, though? You think we just been trained, you know, in the lifestyle that, you know, people want to live and just, you know, like what's, you know what? I mean, what do you, you I mean, I, I feel like it's a big, a big gap. You know what I'm saying? Like it's people like you that be like, man, that's thinking legacy long term. But then it's also people that live in the moment, which is nothing wrong with either or. But at some point you are what Random Days is going to do is it's going to change people's mind. On how they look at these events, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause the mission, like if if, if everybody heard how you explain random days, the the concept, how it came about, more people will buy into that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't know that concept yet. They don't know why you started it. You know what I'm saying? Some people may know, obviously, if they come out there, but to the mass majority of Columbia, you know, where do you where do you see the disconnect? Is it just mostly People just feel like they got other stuff to do, or you don't know. Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I I think it's more. I don't, bro. It's it's tough because it's, it's so many variables. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, mm. it's. I know I'm gonna have to come back to this one, but nah, um, you good? Hey, it's it's all in the moment. We ain't gotta come back to nothing. I just wanted to kind of get you thinking. You know, wanted to see where your mindset was and get you thinking because obviously, you know, having a project like this and having a goal and a mission like this, I know it gotta keep you, keep you up, keep you moving. Always thinking about oh. new ideas of marketing, how to get it out there. You know, bro, I don't sleep, bro. Like I don't sleep. It's um, so I, I I'll tell you this. How I, how I basically just was like, all right, this is how we're going to do this thing, and this is how I'm going to get this demographic. You have, I, I feel like those the other, you know, Black Expos, the Jubilee Festival, the Harambee Festival at Benedict, mm-hmm. I feel like they didn't cater to everybody. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was bored as hell when I was a kid going to Black Expo. <laughs> Word. <laughs> right. Like, I was bored as hell when I went to Harambee Festival with my dad. Yeah. At Benedict. And then from that experience of me working at the Jubilee Festival, I'm like, nah, you're not going to tell me about my history. Yeah. So I was like, I need to have something where you ain't got no excuse. Like, you can't tell me, like, my kids can't come or, you know, 
shit, I don't have a babysitter. No, your kids can come. You can come. Bring your wife. Yeah. You know, bring your husband. Bring, bring, bring them. Yeah. This is for everybody. So that was my goal. Like, you don't have no excuse unless you just like, I don't want to go support that shit. Right. Then just say that. Which, like, people ain't crazy. Gonna, people ain't gonna say it. Like, even if you had that thought, right? You know, people ain't gonna say it, and I don't think people will even feel that way. You know what I'm saying? I really, honestly, truly think that people just be in their own, their own world. Right. You know I mean, like they just they not thinking. You know they, you know they want to support, but it's like I'm a support in spirit. You know what I'm saying? I'm a like. You know, let you know that you know I like what you're doing, but it's the physicality, just being able to show up, and you know. Every year, like it's one day out the year, bro. Like, right. just come pull up. You know what I mean? And enjoy bro, the if, experience. If if we could march on, up the street on Juneteenth, you know what I'm saying, and um, take pictures on Instagram, you know, do reels and stuff, then what's what's the problem with supporting our people? Like, we can. That's the same thing. I feel. Yeah. And I'm not compared to you know not not the dates, but I feel like the. I understand what you're saying. We ain't gonna. We ain't we gonna go. I ain't gonna let nobody misconstrue, misconstrue what you're saying. Right. You know you gotta I, say that now because Black Twitter eat yeah, me alive. Yeah, they eat you up, boy. <laughs> I be like, oh, I be like, uh, 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 uh. Y'all ain't gonna hey, do my Black boy. Black Twitter eat me alive. They ain't bro. about to do Kevin like that. Be but trending. I, I get what you're saying, man. You, you it's like you, we look at a June, a day like Juneteenth, right? Which is super important. Um, and we can get up. We can, you know, put on our colors and. You know, be like, you know, we black. You know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, you know, that, that'll that never change. You know, being black will never change. You're going to always be black. Um, but it's just like, I, I get that day, but then it's also like, in the same way we look at that positivity or what happened at that time in history and how, you know, we were kind of, you know, set free, we can also look at an event like Random Days and be like, this is what... This is what you get from Juneteenth. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no random days without Juneteenth. So right. it's like so it's like they both are both positive. And if you can do one, then you can do the other. Because without this, there will be no other. So like I get what you're saying. Um and not not we're not trying to get ate up on Twitter. So I definitely no, <laughs> I definitely get what you're saying. Um and that's hard, man. I wanna tell you, bro, keep going, keep doing your thing. I wanna know. I mean, I follow you now on Instagram, so I, I hopefully, you know, when when it comes, I want to post. But I I, I want to be the guy that's that stands for something. So like, I, I really want next year when random days come around, like I'm pulling up, I'm catching a flight, um, and me and the lady we gonna pull up as long as we bit not free, we we there. Like I, I really I'm gonna pull up, and that's one of them things that I'm hey, trying that's to love, bro. I'm trying that's to love. live by. You know what I'm saying? Like just pull up for the weekend or whatever, whenever the date is. Um, and come to random days and support, see what the vendor's looking like, um, and just check you out, man. And uh, we, I definitely want to do that. Um, and whatever you got going on um, with the podcast, bro, because we've been talking for over an hour, if you believe it or not. But the podcast, man, we here to support you, man. So if you get any and everything, if you got something going on, that there's flyers being put out, you know, we're going to repost, we're going to share, because I don't want this to feel transactional. You know, I want to make people feel like, you know, it's a relationship. You know, when they sit down with me, they're like, man, that's a solid dude. Just the same way when I sit right. down with y'all, I'll be like, man, them solid people. Like, I, I want to be able to continue to have that, you know, acquaintance and that relationship um, offline. Um, and I just don't want people to feel like it's, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I do this out of the love of just being to talk to dope people, man. Like, I ain't get, you know what I'm saying? We ain't getting paid for this yet. But at the same time, it's like... <laughs> It's something the same way you look at random days wanting to be like the black expo, like you know how things change when you got a master P or somebody that comes and it takes away from the purity of what that's supposed to be about. It's the same way I look at all other podcasts that are on online. People only gonna listen to you know the big names. You know what I'm saying? Like you know you get you get somebody like Lil Wayne on a podcast. You get the influential people, but what about the people that made them who they are? Because right. because without people like us. It ain't it ain't none of them. You know what I mean? And they know that, but I feel like the same way we make people feel important, like Lil Wayne and Drake and, and athletes, whatever the case may have you, y'all important too. You know what I mean? Like y'all the ones impacting the, the world. So that's what we trying to do, man. But uh I appreciate you, bro. I hope you had fun. It's been dope. From the beginning Bye. to the end, man, top to bottom, man. It's been going through. And I wanted to hey. say 
Hey, I hope I ain't. You feel me? I hope. I hope. I hope it was. I hope it was worth it. Man, people gonna love this, man. Like they gonna love it, man. I already know. Especially when we start talking about random days and just going into the meaning and just obviously from your story from being a young, you know, young pops and just everything, man. Because you can relate, man. It's a lot of people that's you know walked in your shoes as far as being a, a young parent and and going through the struggle and, and overcoming that and continue to grind. So like people can relate to that and they gonna pull from it and. Um, Bro, it's going to be dope. I already know. So I ain't even tripping. Uh, we'll cut it, whatever we need to cut out, bloopers, all that. But other than that, bro, I just need a recommendation, bro. Somebody, you know, one or two people I can sit down with next. Some people that you think is dope that fits the mold of this podcast, man. Um, if you can, if you don't have them on the top of your head right now, you can send me their profile on Instagram or their cell phone number and just let them know, like, hey, man, my boy Armand with Big Boss Talk, he going to hit you up. If you want to do it, you can say yes. If not, no. But it was dope experience. Got you. Oh, yeah, I got so I got a few people in my. All right, that's a bet. So just send me those, and then we'll um I'll get them on the show, and that's how we keep the train moving, um with the podcast. So just send me those, um and we'll chop it up with them both. But thank you, man. I hope you have a wonderful day. Tell the fam, you know, hope the fam doing well, and that's it, bro. My God, I appreciate you, man. It was it was love, bro. I truly appreciate you. No doubt, man. Well, you hold it down, all right?